In this video, I'm giving you the exact Amazon product sourcing method that I use to start my $5 million Amazon business. Because if you're anything like me, I know finding that first profitable product felt impossible. It literally took me a couple days to find my first product. But after you watch this quick guide, there's no reason why it should take you more than an hour. No more talking about it though. Let's actually go source some profitable products together. And to do that, I wanna start by explaining a good starting point for finding your first profitable item. And that's gonna be auto ungated brands. So for most new Amazon sellers, you're gonna have to get ungated or approved to sell lots of big name brands, but there's some third-party brands like Cuddle Duds, J. Crew, Stafford. At least at the time of recording this video, a lot of those brands are auto ungated. And so if you start by looking specifically at any of the products in those brands, the sellers on these items are also gonna have lots of other beginner-friendly brands or even brands that you can auto ungate as a brand new seller. And so let's break down the tactical strategy of turning this one random product into a ton of profitable items. And we can do that by using the first paid tool that you'll need to sell on Amazon. That's called Seller Amp. And let's take this a step further. And now based on the fact that we know these sellers have already successfully sourced lots of profitable items, when we load up this Seller Amp storefront, we're going to see all of the other products that this seller has already sourced. And it's going to give us lots of different ideas, different brand ideas, and even different websites that we're going to be able to buy these items from to sell these products on Amazon. So let's just go ahead and walk through the process here. We'll source for 10 or 15 minutes, find a couple winning items together, and then you can go and replicate the exact same thing on your own to start making some money on Amazon. So let's go ahead and start the process here. As I'm looking through all of these storefronts, I'm always asking myself if this max cost option is reasonable. So in this case, if I think I can buy these pants for $13.60, I'm going to hit the Google button. And then that Google button is going to show me all the different sources that I could buy it from and the different prices that are popping up. So in this case, I can see the like software stretch or whatever. Seems like it is selling for 19 bucks. We need to buy these for $13.60. And a lot of times we're going to be able to add coupons and lots of different ways to create our profit margin. I'm sure that'll come into play here in just a second. In this case, I don't think we're going to be able to get our item like 30% cheaper or so where we would need it to be under that max cost because under this max cost is where we're going to make our ideal profit and ROI selling this item. So let's go ahead and keep chugging along here and see what else we can find. So here are like some golf shorts. I actually think I came across these in a previous video as well. We can see if, if any of these are still profitable and then we'll find some new stuff as well. So let's see, these are 24 bucks. And then right now our max cost is $18. We can, however, do a quick check and see if there's any particular sizes or colors that are really expensive. So I can see, for example, all of the different sizes and colors range from anywhere from 27 bucks up to 49, 50 bucks or so. And so if we're buying these for $24, there's a pretty good shot that the more expensive ones are going to be profitable. I just do a quick check. And yeah, so if we are able to get any of the $49 ones, we would be making some money. So let's dive into Keepa. This is the second paid product research tool that you need. That's all you need for doing product research. And there's a ton of different options out there for product research. That's all I use to source in my Amazon business. And then let's also go ahead and use this to filter to the most expensive sizes currently on this listing. So I can see this, for example, this 44 black is selling for $65 right now, and it has 51 ratings. That means that it has definitely sold before, and that price is somewhat consistent. It seems like it hops between 39 to 65 bucks. Usually, I like to see a little bit more consistency, though. So like this, for example, I can see this is nice and consistent. I can see the new price of this is basically always above $50. It's got 21 feedback. So at least at some point, it has sold decently well. And let's see, these are like 30 bright white. But we can also get 20% off here as well. So by the way, anytime you see this email sign up, that kind of thing, you can use this a lot more than once. So let's say your email is marketgmail.com. Punch that in, you get 20% off. And now instead of 24 bucks, we're paying somewhere around a little above 20 bucks. I think is how the math would probably work out there. And we don't just have to use this coupon one time. We can do a plus sign and then literally whatever you want, I'll just expand the keyboard. And then that is going to redirect the next coupon code to whatever is before that plus sign. So if you have marketgmail.com, you're going to send that second coupon code to your same email address. I'm going to make a bunch of new email addresses basically. So that's one thing that I use a ton to make a bunch of items profitable. And this actually looks like a good item. So we can see we buy this for 24 plus we get a 20% coupon there and it's actually less than 20. I'm doing bad mental math today. You can see this is a $16 profit per sale right there. And we also notice that there's already plenty of ratings on this. Another thing that I like to look for on these products is to see if the new seller count is going up and down. The prices are changing a lot. What this shows me right here is that there's new sellers hopping onto the listing and coming off the listing, meaning that people are stocking it in, people are stocking out, which means that sales are actually happening, right? You can see that on the new offer count oscillating up and down. That shows that this product does actually sell. So you can see bang right there. There's a good item. I think I found this in the past. So let's find some other variety though. That's what we're looking for, right? Is anything we can buy from big popular websites and sell for way more on Amazon. In this case, since we've already found something that is pretty interesting as shorts, then a big key to scaling on Amazon is finding similar opportunity. So like with these shorts here, we could look through and find a bunch of other sizes and colors, that kind of things that are probably profitable as well. Or we can take that to a different level and find similar items. In this case, the pants might also be profitable just like the shorts were. So let's see these we need to buy 
by four, 27 bucks. Initially, they're showing up at 27 and we know we can get 20% off here as well. So let's just go ahead and pop these up real quick. This would be something pretty new as well. So there's chinchilla right there. Sweet, yeah, it might actually be the, the same item we already came from. So this $27 max cost, 42 by 32. Let's make sure they have that particular size in stock. Let's see, 42, 32. Yeah, so they have it in stock. Perfect, see some of those they don't have in stock. Maybe those used to be profitable, something like that. Buy it for 27 plus we got a 20% discount. You can see you times 0.80 right there and that's gonna be good to go. Sweet, so nice and profitable there. Even without a coupon, these are nice and profitable. And let's just do a quick check and see how fast these might be selling. So not a lot of like new offer count changes. There's one person selling out most likely on that new offer count. Another thing you can check is the data offers tab on Keepa. Press include historical offers. Then you can filter by sold and you can see basically what the price was and when their stock counts have decreased over time. So you can see, for example, let's see if we can see any sales going on. So these seems like their price is 24 and their stock count decreased a little bit. Okay, cool. So this would definitely be like a little bit of a slower seller. This tab is not the end all be all, by the way. You can hide your information on this. You can say that you have one in stock on the back end of Seller Central and then sales would never show. Let's see if you can find a faster selling variation though, just so we know we've got a good product here. To do that, I like to filter by the total ratings count as well. And that's typically going to show me that things that have obviously had the most ratings left. And if it has a lot of ratings, that means it is probably sold at least at some point. So we know we can get these for 27 plus that 20% coupons. So we're buying these for 21. Let's see, what's the least we could sell these for and still make a decent amount of money? So like 45 or so, we're making our ideal ROI around 30% profit is seven bucks. I'll take that all day. So then we can also filter out anything that's not interesting anymore. So anything that is currently less than 45 bucks, I don't want to see. So we'll just go ahead and filter that by greater than right there. Now we're sorted by the total number of ratings. And you can even see some of these have had the recent ratings left as well. So those would definitely be selling. And it looks like a lot of these. So what is this? They're calling it like quiet shade, something like that. Um, let's see. So quiet shade. Nice. So right there, how many of these are out of stock? Good amount, but I would assume we'll find something that is in stock. 40, 30, 34, 29. Let's see if those are in. So there's 40, 30. What was the other one? A lot of different random numbers. 34, 29, I think it was. Let's see, 34. Okay, so that one sold out. So I was probably bought by some other Amazon sellers that already found that profit. Let's see, 38 by 30 is profitable. Those are in stock as well. So nice, we got a couple more winning items there. So clearly lots of opportunity in these like golf apparel, that kind of thing. You don't really have to know anything about the niche you're sourcing in, just as long as the data looks good, as long as there's a good kind of consistent history of the prices being nice and high. I'll definitely hop on that all day, but let's check out some different variety here. So we got like a, a vinyl album. Let's see, I think it just grabbed the title. So we'll add vinyl to that. And let's see, make sure the covers are the same. Let's see, so $30 max cost. Looks like these are showing up at 29. So we could be making some money here. See, it might be some kind of like collector's edition or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, and on the listing, you can see this is the vinyl right there, limited edition, music and performance. Yes, yeah, seems like it is probably the same. Oh, I think it even said triple and there's three discs on the picture here as well. Nice, so we can definitely sell these. Let's see, these are $29 and we can even make this more profitable. So always make your items as profitable as humanly possible. One way to do that is with card bear, basically just buying discounted gift cards. So in this case, I can see Walmart is one of the really popular ones today. And one of the highest discounted gift card rates is from GCX. I've definitely bought a good amount of gift cards from here. So you can see you can buy $500 worth of Walmart gift cards here for right around 440 bucks. So we save 12% on our buy cost there. So we'll go in here and do times 0.89. See, yeah, so buying for a little under 26, selling for 59. Good history of that price staying pretty stable as well. See, like worst case, it sells for like 55. It sold for 55 for a couple days recently. And then the price went back up. So you can see this would be a $10 profit. Not too bad. So it's the kind of a different type of item for sure. Another thing to think about as we're going through here is check the max cost. And if that seems like there's no way you'd ever buy it for that price, kind of you can trust your gut on that. If you're not sure what is reasonable as a max cost, then that's where you just start looking up more and more items and you develop that skill over time. In this case, there's literally no way we get this for $2. So we can just do a quick check. And let's see, it's like probably at least $5, $3.71 there, if that's the same thing. And yeah, we need to buy this for two bucks. So we're not going to be you know, quite profitable there. Same thing here. I doubt we're getting for $1.57. We can just do a quick check. Yeah, so those are like $3.50 each. No worries. Let's keep chugging along here. And that's the big thing. As you keep growing on Amazon, you'll kind of get a feel for what costs are reasonable, what costs are you know pretty high, something you might want to dig into, do research. Let's check this out. So some kind of like sunscreen, see if we can get these for $8.43. We're making some money. And what size was this? This is 50 milliliters right there. See a lot of these. What's this popping up at 730 right there? The shopping tab that pops up over here is always pretty useful. These are showing up around 12.57. Pop that open, see if we could get a really good coupon or anything like that. Probably not. See, this is like a different type of that sunscreen. Let's do a quick check here. So let's see, so this is, or this is slightly different, 100 milliliter. It's like a different type. This one is not the right SPF. This one was what we were looking for. We'd need a really good coupon though. Always check Capital One Shopping, or you can always just like Google, in this case, like Care to Beauty coupon codes. Uh, you might be able to save some money on that. In this case, I'm only seeing 5% on here. So I'm really doubting we're gonna 
able to get like a 50% coupon code like we really need to be making some money here. So let's just go ahead and keep chugging along. Let's see, we got some like some Pyrex bowls or something like that. Seems a little bit overpriced to me. Selling for like, yeah, like 68 bucks. Let's just do a quick double check and make sure that is actually the price we need to pay because there's probably a good shot we can get it for that price. See, the price is also decreasing a little bit recently as well. So we got to think about that, but it is selling decently well. Price is hopping up and down. If you ever see this Kiva chart on a listing, this basically tells me it's selling super well. Amazon's just trying to find somebody who's got it in stock soon enough to get it to a customer within a few days. If it's a lot flatter, it generally tends to sell a little bit slower or there's one seller who has like a ton of units in stock and is making a lot of the sales. In this case, I can see Amazon's just trying to find somebody to keep making these sales. So this usually shows me something that is interesting to dig deeper on. And let's see. So this could be worth checking out for sure. What are we looking at? This eight piece set right here. Is this what we're looking for? So four, two, one. Is that the same size as four, two, one, one? Yeah, these look the same to me. Sweet. So we're buying these for 24 and we already know we can get a good discounted gift card. So you can see this is where we make items profitable that most people would not buy, right? 21% ROI without any kind of extra discounts, anything like that. You and I know we can get 11% off with that discounted gift card. And now we've made an item from something that's not good into something that is good. And you can also see that price is hopping up a lot to 59. So honestly, if I was selling this, I would put the price at 59 bucks. Let these other sellers make the $55 sales because there's plenty of sales popping up to 59, 58 bucks. And I might as well squeeze a little bit of extra profit out of it. So there's another good item. This one's definitely gonna be selling a lot faster. So let me show you that data offers trick I was talking about as well. We can go in here, filter by sold 30 days. Uh, it's even better if we can do that. And I like to use this to estimate how many I might test order and to confirm that people actually wanna pay the prices that may seem a little bit crazy, but I can get that immediate validation because I can see this particular seller, their price over the last week or so has been anywhere from 59 to 60 bucks. And you can see during that same time period over the course of 24 hours or so, they sold three other items. So there's proof right there that people do wanna pay $59. And that same $59 price point is where I'm already profitable. So that is always a good sign. See right here, this FBM seller was making some sales. See those kind of one by one sales happening and their price was even higher. They were at like 68 bucks a few weeks ago. Yeah, so I'm just seeing lots of sales all over the place, right? So lots of these stock counts are decreasing at profitable prices for us. So this is just one of those things I used to reinforce. Hey, this is probably gonna be a good item. I'm probably not gonna have too much trouble making sales on that. So that looks good to me. Let's keep chugging along, see what else we can find. Though we're on a good roll. See, so we need to buy these for 963. I do think the price is really flat here. So this could be a brand that's already selling on it, in which case this is. See, Stonewall Kitchen is the seller and that is the name of the brand. Personally, I rarely compete on listings where the brand already sells it. It tells me that they might wanna kick off all the other third party sellers on that listing at some point. And especially on this where there's only two sellers, I'm probably gonna avoid that, even though this probably would be profitable. I'm seeing a lot of these for 11 bucks. All we would need is like a 20% coupon, but it's not worth risking your account over one profitable item. There's plenty more for us to find basically. Let's see, so like some kind of cutting board oil. Let's see, a lot of these are selling for like 37 hotel restaurant supply. So we'd need a little bit of a coupon here for sure. See, 10% back. See if anything's popping up on this website. Seven, so yeah, so 37, 58. So like best case, it seems we can get 10% if any of those coupons work. I'm not even gonna assume they work. And a lot of times what you'll notice as you're doing storefront stocking, you see a lot of items will hang out at a higher price point for a while and that price might drop off a little bit. Usually what happens is that old price point where it was a lot higher was where it was profitable. And then a lot of people hopped on or something like that. You can see in this case, there's 52 sellers on here. And then that just like increase in supply on the listing probably made the prices drop overall. Let's just double check to confirm that suspicion here though. So yeah, exactly what I was talking about. You can see it used to be nice and profitable. Prices were like 100 to 85 bucks. A lot of people found it. There's just no way to, it doesn't seem like there's a great way to add a bunch of discounts in ways that other people aren't gonna be thinking about. So it was just hard for the profit to stay nice and high on this. This is something where you could keep your eye on it, see if the prices do to hop back up. It seems like it sells nice and fast and the profit was really good. Just not gonna be something that we're checking out today. Same story here. You see how that price is a lot higher than it dropped off. Let's just do a quick Google. I bet when I press the Google over here, it's gonna show me that we can get it for 15 to 18 bucks. Let's see if we can even buy it anywhere. Maybe it's like completely gone. Let's see, 33, pop up the shopping tab potentially. Let's see, so 22 maybe. Used to be able to buy it for 22 bucks. Maybe there's a sale of some kind, something like that going on. This is even more expensive than I was expecting, honestly. So yeah, that's just one of those things. As you're sourcing, the more items you can skip past and not even have to look into, obviously we're not buying this for 47 cents. Let's keep scrolling. The price has dropped a lot on this recently. Let's keep scrolling. Things like that will make you a lot more efficient and just make you a ton more money per hour that you actually spend working on the business. The best way to, to get good at that is literally just continuing to dig in and look at more and more products. Let's see if we can find anything else here towards the end. Let's see, gold, what, is, what are they calling this? Gold class leather lotion. We need to buy these for 14 bucks. A couple of these are popping up. See, is this the right thing? Never bought from this website. If you're looking for websites and you're not sure if it's like trustworthy, if they do take PayPal or if they have like cash back services linked or anything like that, that's usually a good sign that it is somewhat trustworthy 
trustworthy of a website like PayPal. They're not going to offer PayPal on their website if they don't plan on actually shipping what you're buying because it's really easy to get your money back through PayPal. So in this case, I'm not super worried about it not being legit. I just, I don't have a way to verify the picture is really small. If that's the same, because the packaging is a little bit different. I think this is the same packaging now. Let's see, yeah. So this is the same packaging we're looking at. Pro Pride Hitch, something like that. And let's see, I'm um, just do a quick double check. Maybe some coupons here. So I'm always a big fan of just adding stuff to cart, seeing what coupons apply. You never know when you're going to be able to create some margin where other people aren't really thinking about it. Let's see. It seems like Walmart might also, at least they had it at some point. Yeah, it's just not popping up. Let's see. So third party sellers got it for like 16 or so. So yeah, it must be hard to come by or something like that. But yeah, we're able to find several good profitable items there. And so then once you've bought one item or 50 different items that you want to send into Amazon, that's where Boxum is going to come into play. This is the last offer you need as an Amazon. So you can try it for free down below, but it basically tracks all the profit that your business makes. This is my Amazon dashboard here. And I have full videos walking you through how to create a shipment. But after you've received these products at home, you'll just press the create shipment button on Boxum. And then when you go ahead and follow the step-by-step -step process that Boxum walks you through, it'll make the shipment creation process a lot faster, a lot smoother. And then you can also use some things like tracking your costs. So we already looked at being able to actually know what your business is making. That's obviously an improvement over Seller Central. And then you can also use 2D barcodes, which you have to use something like Boxum to create. And these 2D barcodes automatically get embedded on the labels that I ship off to Amazon, but it helps me, my personal Amazon business, make sales a couple days faster on average. So it's just one of those ways to increase your cash flow with no extra work while you're already using something that saves you a bunch of time. But now that you actually know the strategy behind sourcing the products, if you want to see the full step-by-step -step on creating a shipment, getting these products sent into Amazon and making those sales, I'll leave a link above to a full shipment guide. And the other step of actually being able to make the sales on these listings, I get questions all the time, is about ungating. So being able to get approved to sell these big name brands. As we're going out and sourcing products in my personal Amazon store, if I'm ever gated to sell a new brand, so when I go into Seller Central, it says apply to sell and it doesn't just say I can immediately start selling it. I'm just going to take that invoice from wherever I bought that item profitably. Make sure that the invoice has your address on it that matches your Amazon seller account. So usually that's going to be like your house address, your business address, that kind of thing. Just make sure that that address matches your Amazon seller account. Submit that to Amazon. You can also attach like pictures of the item, the tracking proof, anything that kind of shows the whole picture of the item. Amazon just needs to know that you're buying stuff from legitimate retailers, legitimate suppliers, not buying it from AliExpress and Alibaba and trying to sell a bunch of fake products, pretending that they're name brands on Amazon. But if you guys did get value from this video and you're excited to start selling on Amazon, make sure you grab a two week free trial of Selleramp and Boxum down below. Those are the tools you actually need to start setting up your Amazon business. Also, let me know if you have any questions, comments, anything like that. Always happy to chat with you guys down below. And if you want to help me out for free, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. That's a free way for you to show some love. Help me hit my goal of having 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And if you want to learn the rest of the entire Amazon game for free, I'll leave a link right here. I've made a complete four hour long free Amazon course for you. Go bookmark it or start watching it now.